Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In response to the Umari argument for proving an excellent quality in Abu Bakr or even proving his right to succession to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam because he led prayers allegedly in the last days of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so far we presented the following. First, we have many, many proofs that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam and after him his son al-Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam and after him al-Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu was salam they are the caliphs, they are the successors, they are the imams after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the 12th imam. So the question of Abu Bakr becoming an imam doesn't even rise, is not even relevant and we do not have, we as Shia do not even have one hadith to the contrary. Second, we have many, many proofs that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forewarned. He forewarned about the coming usurpation of Khilafah and the pact that the villains of Medina and the Munafiqeen had made that they are going to take over the affairs of the Muslims when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passes on from this world. And specifically, Abu Bakr and Omar were involved in those, um, in those schemes, in the, those plots. So the question of him leading prayers or not um, uh, doesn't amount to anything before us. Especially we have, uh, we have a hadith that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam used to lead prayers. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam would lead prayers during the time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was struck with illness. Uh, and this is very briefly what I'm uh, uh, presenting you is very brief and inshallah if I continue giving you speeches on other topics then you will find in those topics you will find more material that would be relevant to this discussion as well. Second, we mentioned that Omaris themselves, they, may, they state that there has been no appointment, no appointment of anyone as Khalifa. Of anyone as Khalifa. And no appointment of especially, no appointment of, we should put, uh, including Abu Bakr. Including Abu Bakr. No appointment of Abu Bakr him specifically as Khalifa, as successor. So, whether he led prayers or did not lead prayers, Abu Bakr was not appointed because the vast majority, even some of them, have claimed consensus on this issue that they all agree. Vast agreement that nobody was appointed. And especially. With regard to Abu Bakr, Omar says so, Aisha says so, Abu Bakr himself says so, and very, very prominent and towering figures in Umari scholarship state so, that he was not appointed as successor of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Uh, so we just make this 2A and 2B, so, or we could make it number three. Our Assertion number three, rejection number three, and regard to this Omari claim is the following. That even if we agree that Abu Bakr, let's say Abu Bakr led prayers. Abu Bakr led prayers. So what? <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what? We are talking about Al-Khilafah al uzma we are talking about succession to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not talking about who is the Imam of Jama'ah. We are not talking about who is the leader of the congregation in prayers. We are talking about the successor of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all affairs. In all affairs. And it's pretty obvious that, that uh, an Imam in all affairs, who is successor of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is the political leader of Muslims, as well as a spiritual leader of the Muslims, as well as a religious 
leader of the Muslim as well as Muslims le a leader in the questions of, of uh, legality and shara and explaining the finer points of sharia and the interpretation of Quran and resolving all matters of dispute amongst Muslims. Such a person, such a position is different than the position of being an imam of jama'ah of a masjid. Uh, and this is pretty obvious. It does not need any um, proof. It does not need any further explanation. We, uh, even if we agree, even if we submit and embrace that, let's say, Abu Bakr did lead, indeed lead, lead prayers in those days, how does it prove, especially, especially the Umaris believe that a person who is fasiq, who is a fajir, who is a bastard, a person who is extremely sinful, he's a thief, he's adulterous, he is gay, he's a whatever, sodomized, whatever, <laughs> you mention it, any sort of bad character you mention, he can lead prayers. So, if a person led prayers, it does not necessarily mean that he was not one of the above. If, how do you prove that he is also the heir of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all other affairs? That's not provable. That doesn't mean there should be a commensurability, a relationship, a report, between a proof and the conclusion that we are trying to derive from that proof. The proof should lead to that conclusion. If I say, for instance, if I say, for instance, that I speak English, I speak English, for instance, does it mean that I'm British? No, it doesn't mean that I'm British. I speak English. I've learned English. I was born a native English speaker. I, I went to school to learn English. Maybe I learned English in Great Britain. Maybe I never been to Great Britain. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. And this proof that I speak English and the conclusion that I'm trying to infer from this conclusion, uh, from this proof, that because I speak English, therefore I'm British, I'm, I'm from London. No, I could speak English and I could be Chinese or Indian or, or from Saudi Arabia. So there has to be, the proof has to have a report. The proof has to be such that in a rational way, in a logical manner, this would lead common folks to believe to that, in that conclusion. So we are talking about the imam of the entire Muslim nation, Muslim nation, after the demise of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, what the Omaris come up with is the imama of a masjid, and even that is questionable because the guy was fired from that, but let's say he was not fired. The imama of a, of a mosque. So the imam of a mosque, even if it's the mosque of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa does not, does not lead one to believe, does not mean, does not, is not a sufficient proof to prove the uh, desired conclusion, which is the imam of the entire Muslim nation. If it were the case, right now in Medina al-Munawwara, if you go, there are probably like at least 10 registered, 10 registered imams. Imams, or even more, of the uh, the Grand Mosque at Medina. In Medina, there are at least ten registered, or probably more, because at different times, different Imams they lead prayers. So, <laughs> such a person is the Imam of the entire Muslim world. No rational person even thinks of that. 
Because it doesn't mean if you're an imam of the mosque, you're imam of the mosque. It does not mean also that you are a ruler, you're a governor, or you're a minister in a cabinet, or anything else. It just means that you are imam in that mosque. That's what it means. Nothing more or nothing less. So this would be our third proof with regard to the rejection of the Omri claim that the imam of Abu Bakr proves his uh, succession to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin.